Ever since I discovered the music from Steven Universe, I am constantly blown away by just how good it is. I mean, check this out. Very interesting. We're getting this kind of, this, this feeling like, okay, we're in this maybe G major place. And then something happens like, we're staying on this G, but could it be like a, like an F over G? Could it be a G dominant? Maybe. Then we go to a C major over a G. And then something else happens. It's like, is it just going minor? Is it minor seventh? Is it a different chord entirely? Maybe it's E flat over G? Guys, don't forget, Black Friday, we are doing a massive sale. Everything on the Academy available for 99 bucks. That is gonna be our massive Black Friday sale, only from Black Friday through Cyber Monday. So you will have a couple days to take advantage of it. That's everything we have on the Academy. Intro to Piano, Intro to Music Theory, Intro to Improvisation, Improv Obstacle Course, Harmony 101, and our Making Sense of Modes course. It's available all for 99 bucks. It's literally like a $450 value. It's hours and hours and hours and hours of content, hundreds of videos, count actionable steps and examples and exercises that you can play along with and use forever to work on this stuff. You get access to the courses for life when you sign up using the link in the description below when you sign up for the Corner Music Academy. And reminder, that's only gonna be from Black Friday through Cyber Monday, so be sure to take advantage of it during those four days coming up. Let's keep going. Here in the garden, let's play a game. That sounds a lot. I'll show you how. That sounds to me like we're going here and we're just making it dominant, maybe. And then we go to the four holding on to this pedal tone the whole time. And remember, a pedal tone is just any note that we're holding in the bass as other harmony goes by. Let's play a game. I'll show you how it's done. Ba -da -da -da. So that we, we heard in the bass line. That kind of movement there, that's really nice. And it's very interesting to me, and this is one of the reasons I wanna talk about this, because this leaves so many things on the table for possibilities as to what the actual function of this harmony is, right? Because on the surface, it looks pretty simple. It's like, oh, well, it's just G, and then G7, and then C, but with the G in the bass, and then maybe just flip that minor, and then that brings us right back. And if we did that on its own, it sounds fantastic, really beautiful, and we have this nice melody that's... <laughs> Something like that, right? It's the melody where the same type of note choice and phrasing can be placed over multiple different harmonic areas and it still works really well. And in fact, that helps to emphasize what's going on as the harmony develops. As we move down with this... It, it almost feels like we're falling in a way. Even though the root is not changing, we're going from G to F to E and then down to E flat, right? So we have this feeling like we're moving down and then that can even resolve in that direction as well. When we have the melody kind of staying where it is, right, and we allow that counter melody to just move down the scale like that and resolve itself in different ways, I mean, this is all just really interesting parts of what is creating the overall harmony. But it does bring up an interesting question and that is, what's the actual functionality of all of these chords? Obviously, we can pretty much safely say that we're starting on G major. But when we have this chord, in the context that we hear it, I think it's pretty clear that it's a G dominant. Here in the garden, stand very still. Yeah. I think it's something like that. We can hear there's a, in the, uh, in the accompaniment, there's an A, there's a there's an F, there's a D. I think we're still getting this, you know, getting that uh, that B natural in there as well. Does this leave the possibility for it to be anything else? Well, now, if it were less defined, we could potentially ask the question, is it F over G? Which essentially just creates a G sus chord, right? G suspended chord. Now this is where I think it's kind of interesting because To me, the functionality, where that harmony is actually drawing your ear, where you want to hear the resolutions, where the chords just kind of guide you, I honestly think it kind of does the same thing. Whether you choose to make this second chord a, just a straight dominant, or let it kind of 
exist in its sus space. Now, notice the only difference, because we said in that second chord, we do have an A, we do have an F, and we do have a D, so really it's only the existence of this B that's telling us that it is a G dominant chord, because all we'd have to do is change that B to a C which by the very nature of a suspended chord, which means we don't have a defined third, we are trading our third out for that C, right? So it's almost the exact same chord with the substitution of one note, but that one note changes the characteristics of that chord entirely. Rather than sounding like a dominant chord, now it has this totally different characteristic about it, but yet when we place it in the sequence of chords, Here's our dominant chord, moving on to our C, our four chord over the one. Now, if we change that and use our sus chord instead, there's our sus chord, back to our C over G. It kind of does the same thing, and that's what's so cool about harmony like this, being this subjective, or at least giving the opportunity for many different things to work here, and actually lead your ear on the same type of harmonic path, where all those transitions and the ultimate resolutions just make sense. This'll be so much fun. And then she so right there. This'll be so much fun where we flip ourselves minor there. This is another place where it could be multiple different things depending on how you're looking at it. So G dominant, C over G, and then what's going on here? Is it a C minor? Is it a C minor seven? Is it an E flat major seven over G? The nature of putting this on the, on the bottom means that all of these chords, C minor, C minor 7, some type of E flat 6 or maybe E flat 7 chord. It all kind of works there because really those chords basically have all the same notes. But let's go back because I want to see if it is defined whether this is a C minor, C minor 7, or perhaps an E flat major chord of some kind. Here in the garden. Let's play a game, I'll show you how it's done. Here in the garden, stand very still, this'll be so much fun. Okay, this is really interesting. So we have left our pedal tone at this point. So that is where our bass line goes, E flat. Now you might say, oh, well, it's playing an E flat, so it's obviously an E flat chord. And you might be right, but just judging by what we had in the beginning, which was this G held out over a dominant chord, and then we kind of also have it held out over this C major chord, that should tell us right away that just because the G is on the bottom doesn't mean it's necessarily a G chord. The same thing is true here. We have an E flat in the bass, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's an E flat chord. What I'm hearing now, I kind of feel like most things are pointing to this being an E flat major six, major seven type chord. But it is kind of ambiguous and there are a number of different things that work here. Here in the garden, stand very still. Be There's so our C, and again, our E flat. Ah! Ah, oh, that's, that's classic right there. We have E minor here, and then we have a chromatic descending bass line. That just means we're gonna go down like this. All right, okay, and what it's gonna do is we're gonna build all our chords. Here is B major, but it's over D sharp. Here's G major, but it's over D. A major, but it's over C sharp. So you kind of see how we're building these different tries, we're building these different chords, but we're not using the roots necessarily in the bass. Maybe the next chord is C major. That would make a lot of sense here. Let's hear. Okay, so it goes right back to, it goes, it's like a turnaround. It goes back to the top at G major. Right, so here we have B major which normally would have an 
then we have G major, which would normally have G in the bass. And then, so if we put all these chords into room position, we get this. It's a nice series of chords, but isn't it so much cooler to let that bass line just walk itself down? That to me is so much cooler. Counting the seconds, standing alone, as thousands of years go by. Happily wondering, night after night, is this how it works? Am I doing it right? Happy to listen, happy to stay, happily watching her dream. By the way, this is like horribly, horribly sad. <laughs> I know we said at the beginning that we have this, this sus chord that could be built if we use F major over G, right? Well, here we are. Now we've actually gone straight to the F chord, to our four, and then back to our one. Listen again. Very nice. Ooh. No one's there. See that no one's there. See that no. Oh, that's really interesting. So we have. Uh... Wow. Oh, that's really cool. So what we're doing there is we're using D minor. Now remember, in the key of G major. That's the five chord, and the five chord is usually major. So we've now decided to take that D chord and flip it minor, which gives us a little bit of something to latch our ear onto and go, oh, that's a little bit different. That's nice, I like that. Now there's a fun fact about that chord, which we'll talk about in just a second. F, G, G major. This is what's cool about that D minor chord. That D minor chord, the D minor chord and the F major chord are almost identical. They kind of do the same thing, which is why even that F chord in the key of G, here we are. It's a really nice sound to us because we're used to, we're used to hearing that F, F sharp in the key of G. That's what we're normally expecting to hear. And instead we hear this nice, uh, it's a little bit of a darker sound, right? And it just has this really nice resolution. And after coming off this F, C, G, that D minor is almost the same exact thing as that, as that F major, right? So it kind of does the same thing. It kind of leads our ear in a very similar direction. And it's just a really nice, little bit of a darker sound. Happily watching the dream. It's really sad. The harmony is brilliantly written to help us feel that, right? Because we have this kind of like, what's going on here? Oh, but it's, it's kind of dark. And every time we come back around to here, it's like, okay, is there some hope? Right, and then we have, And this, this is almost always a sad, sentimental thing. And then we all, again, we have our bridge. The harmony is so well written 
in order to help us feel the emotion that is supposed to be felt during a scene like this. And it's so cool to me that it's bringing this type of complexity disguised in simplicity to so many people that might not otherwise get to hear music that is built with this type of intelligently written harmony. Props to Rebecca Sugar and everybody involved in the making of this show because it's just the music is unbelievably fantastic. I'm such a fan. And don't forget if you want to learn how to hear stuff like this and be able to identify it just like I'm doing here, Black Friday and the few days between that and Cyber Monday, that is your chance to get everything we have available on the Cornell Music Academy for 99 bucks. It's like over a $450 value for 99 bucks. It's, it's insane. We've never done a deal like this. We've never done Black Friday before, so we want to do something big for you guys. And you're only going to have those four days to take advantage of it. Starting on Black Friday all the way through Cyber Monday, you'll be able to take advantage of this. So be sure to check out that link in the description below. And let me know what other music you want me to check out, either from Steven Universe or a show that also has great music that I haven't checked out yet. I'm looking forward to reading your recommendations in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Thank you.